Hello and welcome. This is going to be the final or very last or the ultimate Scratch project that we're going to do together. Um, since we are in the module called Complex Problems, this will indeed be a complex problem, but a very, very worthwhile one. Perhaps the most useful thing we've done so far. Now, every video game you have ever played, be that uh, FIFA, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, or anything taking place in three dimensions, has something called a physics engine. A physics engine takes um, a specific dot of your character, which is polygons built around the center of gravity, or a vertex, and applies a bunch of physics equations that have to do with mass, with gravity, uh, wind, that make those characters in the game, be that soccer balls being kicked around, or tools, or guns, or weapons, seem realistic. Um, they fall at a speed that's the same in reality, they bounce off of floors and walls and so on. So what you will be tasked in doing, and what I will demonstrate right now, is a really simple looking case of a ball in a room. And this ball is kicked up and it bounces off the walls, the floor, the ceiling. And the idea is we have this blue paddle and we keep the ball bouncing off the paddle and not let it reach the red floor. If it reaches the floor, we lose. If it keeps bouncing on the paddle until it's like really almost stationary, then we win. And I will demonstrate it now. Green flag, space bar, bounce of the ceiling. So I move with these arrows. As you can see, the next bounce is already a little bit less and it'll bounce off the wall naturally. And it's just simply a ball moving exactly the same way the ball would move in reality. The only thing that's slightly different is that this happens slightly in slow motion, but it, no matter how you solve this problem, you will be able to either accelerate or slow down time, which will be one of the fun things in this game. And we just keep this guy up and don't let him touch the red and we win. I know it appears simple, it's not. And I know that at least some people that have gone through the course will be able to do it. I think that's it, we're about to win. Come on. Ah, oh, come on. That's it. It pretty much came stationary. So, what's going to be at stake is uh, you will be using very similar equations that you used in projectile motion. In fact, I suggest you open up your saved projectile motion project or you redo the projectile motion tutorial and start from there. Uh, make sure I will put some resources in the links, but feel free to look around on Google and YouTube tutorials about simulating physics and gravity in Scratch. You know, the way I learn is using multiple resources, searching for things on the internet. So I suggest you do the same. Uh, you will have two hints, and that's it. Only two hint videos. What I will teach you how to do is to bounce the ball up only in a straight line and keep it bouncing up and down ever slightly less until it comes to rest. And I'll teach you how to bounce it off the wall. What that won't do is it won't teach you how to bounce it off another object that's somewhere in the space how to bounce it off the how to bounce it on an angle when it's coming on an angle it will only do it straight up and down so you're going to have much of this to figure out and think of it as a challenge if you don't succeed in the end it's okay it's it's quite a difficult problem it's something that I would normally assign to kids in year 11 or 12 that have had the same amount of coding experience as you guys and you know if you don't get to the very end it means you still have a lot to learn if you do however get to the very end it means that you've done exceptionally well and every course I create here ends in an exceptionally difficult problem and I suggest you give this your best shot. Grapple with it. It took me about an hour and a half, but I suggest you guys 
put in about five hours. Do your best and see what happens. Okay, on to the hints.